guys welcome so today i want to show you guys how to especially if you use react and typescript a lot this is not a tutorial on react or typescript this is more when you're using react and typescript how to focus on accessibility as your goal nowadays if your project if your work is not accessible you become a liability for a big lawsuit so you definitely want to make sure that your developers are thinking of that as a first. Now, I know it's not an easy thing because me, myself, as, as a developer, you are running against time. You want to get this work out and, and you want to make it efficient. So accessibility is not the first thing in your mind. So with that said, what I want to do is show you just some basic, simple things you can do while developing to make sure your work is accessible and then you can fix all the major stuff afterwards. All right, so the, the, to actually be on the same page with me, please go to this repo over here. You can clone the template that I have and we'll get started together from there. Here is my repo. The main has the template and segment one has all the, all the updated code if you just wanna skip directly to it. Okay, as you can see, I have on Hello World. Here is my Hello World project, Hello World. And my console shows me nothing, which is fine telling me that all of this is fine. This is not true. This is not accessible. Even this hello world is not accessible. So let me show you why. All right, so the first thing we're gonna download is a package called React Axe. So React Axe is a way for developers to, it, it basically, it checks to see whether our code is, our JSX elements are accessible or not. So I'm gonna bring my React Axe in here so I can just say, if let's remember we want to use react acts only when we are not in production so we say if process dot environment dot node environment does not equal production so when we are not in production const acts equals require and then we say react acts the next thing we want to do is you just let's just use it. It takes three elements. React, React DOM. One second. There we go. So now let's save this. Now we should get a bunch of comments here. Let's see. Yep, right away. It tells you that we have three moderate issues. It even tells you the level of them. It says document must have one main landmark. Page must contain a level one heading. All page must contain my landmarks. Right, so we gotta fix this. Right away it tells you that our this code that many of you have written millions of times is not accessible to a screen reader. So how do we do that? So the first thing is let's add a main here. So each page must have a main, each page. Save it. Let's try that again. Let's remove this, refresh. Okay, now we only have one thing. Page must contain level one heading. Here I have a P tab. That's not good. H1. Welcome. Save it. Beautiful. Everything is going. So what about if I want another heading? But if I let's because H but I want it really small. So I'm gonna say H4. Uh um this is a tutorial. I wanted some really small. Save it. This is this is fine. I can just use CSS to move it to the center. That's fine. I can update the CSS here and say H4 as well. There we go. But let me refresh this. Notice I'm going to get an error. I'm going to get a warning. Heading levels should only increase by one. This is something I see a lot. You cannot jump from h1 to h4 you have to go numerically one two three so this must be an h2 you cannot use an h4 again guys this is something that we don't think about but we need to make this a practice h2 there we go and then you can just add h2 there all right so this is good that this is the first step into making your work accessible as you can see we have h1 we have h2 all right so we don't really need h2 i just wanted to show you 
that difference. So we have the main tag and we have the h1. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is we want to make a table. So let's go to our components. I already have a table here. So let's say we want to make just a basic table. And then we can make the table CSS. So in this table, again, let's make this bigger. If you cannot see, table. Oh no, this is the wrong one I'm using it in. Right here, there we go. And then we want to, let's create the table element, const table. Again, this is TypeScript. You don't have to, I come from a C++ background, so I, the, putting the returns there makes me feel better. But there, TypeScript does inf, uh, infer it and knows it's a JSX element, so you don't need to do that. So let's just make a basic table that has, um, let's see, I put a table head and then a table body. Okay, and then inside this table head, we can put table row. And just put, what do we want? We want th. Let's call this item. Let's make another one. Let's call it purchased. Those two. All right, and then in the table body, we can make say table row. So for the item one, what did we, we have table data, let's say 1619, that's what we purchased, 1619, and the next thing that we purchased, and the next, uh, in, um, uh, is it purchased? That's a boolean, we can say true. <clears throat> let's create another table row, let's call this one new heights, false, I right, so that's good. And now let's export it. Beautiful. So we, you know what I want to do? I just want to quickly create this index file, TypeScript, export default as table com table from. Tables. There we go. And then, so we have this here now. This is good. All right. So let's 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 show this on the screen. So to show this on the screen, I'm going to create a table page here. And then inside this table page, I just need a. Let's see. I need to import it from components. And then cons table page. Again, I have the, all of this code would be in my segment one repository. All right, so now we can show the table on the screen. And then export default table page. All right, awesome. Okay, so in our app, we will just import it from pages. Import table page from pages. There we go. Oh, we um we didn't add CSS to our table, so it's not gonna look pretty at all. So let's just do that now. I know we can um we can say table has a width of a hundred percent. We can say table table head table data. Give them give it a border of one pixel solid and black. And then we can give it some padding. We can give the header and the table data some padding. We can say 
padding of 2% and then each box we want them to be the same width. All right, this is good. There we go. Let's refresh this. Now, notice React Axe didn't tell you anything over here. It hasn't told you anything. So there's no, technically there's no error here, but this is wrong. So this is where React Axe has its own limitation. It tells you that your table is fine, but this table isn't actually accessible. And I'll, I'll explain why to you. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to try and use the voiceover on the Mac, the screen reader. So hopefully you guys can hear it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to, but let's, let's test it out. You see, it's so it says I am on a web content. So I, I'm going to go into the main page now. So that has the main page here. I'm, I'm, I'm using my keyboard. All I'm doing is using keyboard. I'm not using my mouse. I'm using my keyboard. All right. So now I'm here. So content inside of a group to enter the web area. Press control option shift down arrow. All right. So I'm going to go into it. Heading level one. Welcome. You are currently on. So it says I am currently on the heading level one. So that's a, so that's the voice of I am on I am on the heading level one. All right. So now watch when I go into the table. Table zero columns, three rows. You are currently in a table. To navigate the cells. So it says I am on a table. So for a blind user, this user doesn't know anything about the table. So the table just comes there. It goes directly to the table. So let's navigate through the table. So it doesn't relate. All right, so it doesn't relate this item, sixteen nineteen, to actual item itself. All right, so let's. All right, so let's stop there. All right, so the first thing that you can do here is let me let me turn off the voiceover. The first thing you can do to make this table accessible is we can add a uh, something as easy as a table caption. Honestly, we can put a table caption here, right under the table. And tell to tell the user what this table is about. So we can say this is a tutorial on accessibility. So by adding a caption in the table, you're telling the visible users what the table is about without having to go through the whole table. And you're telling the blind users what the table is about. So we're gonna do voiceover again on this table, and you're gonna listen to how the screen reader just reads the the caption first, so the blind user would know. So let's do that again. Voice over on Chrome, React app toolbar item palette, bookmarks toolbar, React app web content, React app web content. All right, so let's see. Heading level one, welcome. You are currently on a heading level one. Next one. This is a tutorial on accessibility table. You see? It read it. This is a tutorial and accessibility. So for the so so for the blind user, they know what the table is about before even going into the table. This is extremely helpful. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do, and the final thing we're gonna do is, we wanna add. So each table head should have a scope. So what the scope allows, it allows the screen reader to know which item belongs to the column and which item belongs to the row. So we're gonna add a scope. This is a column. This is a column. And then we're gonna add this is a row. Now for the first item of each row, you have to make the table data a TH. TH. And then you make the scope a row. Signifying the first element of the row. That's what it does. Again, TH, and then signifies the first element of the row. All right, so that's it. So we should be able to, now let's try this again. 
Again, you notice React Acts didn't tell you anything, even though the table wasn't accessible. All right, so we are going to use VoiceOver again. Accessibility table zero columns. Item column one of two. You are currently on a text element. In so it tells us column one of two. Let's go to the next column. Purchased. Purchased column two of two. You next one. Row two of three. Sixteen nineteen. Item sixteen nineteen. Col so notice what it did. It says row two of three. Sixteen ninety. Item. So it pronounces the item. To let you know this is this is this is within the item column. Let's go to the next one. Purchased true column two of two. So again it said purchased true column two of two. So it tells you what column it belongs to. Without the scope, this wouldn't have happened. So again, guys, these are, let me turn off the voiceover. So these are basic things. This is a simple table. I know when the table gets a little more complicated, you have to use something called call, uh, call group. Well, to to actually group the headings with the rows, but this is for the basic table line. And I know a lot of uh, developers create basic tables throughout their projects. So again, this is something easy that you can just implement if you want. If you want to add focus to your to each of your heading. Right now, if I was to use tab, look at tab. If I was to use tab, there's no focus at all on my page. If I want to make this table a focus by using tab, all you have to do is add tab index. Which I don't suggest you do because you don't need to make the table a focus. So by adding tab index zero, my table becomes focusable. Watch this. It's focusable. And that's the only thing that it becomes focusable. If I want to make the headings focusable, I will do the same thing to each of the headings. But again, there's no reason to do this. Again, you see that? I've made each of them focusable. So let's just remove that. And I, I think that's it. Uh, on the, uh, join me on the next tutorial where we would uh, talk about different things like cards and navigations. Thank you, guys. Oh, don't forget to subscribe.